The Ukrainian Army Command is desperately trying to pull its exhausted brigades off the front lines. At the same time, Ukraine is also trying to provide the new brigades with enough armored vehicles to prevent the military from becoming mere cannon fodder for the invaders, writes Forbes. The publication noted that German Leopard 1A5 and Leopard 2A4 tanks, which arrived late, as well as new equipment from the US, France and Australia, helped Ukraine in this. In particular, Ukrainian fighters are in dire need of armored vehicles, so it is good news for them that Croatia has decided to replace its fleet of old tanks and combat vehicles from the Cold War. The Croatian government has agreed to sell 30 old M84 tanks and 30 old M80 combat vehicles to the German government, which is then to transfer these vehicles to Ukraine. The 46-ton M84 is the Yugoslav version of the Soviet T-72. The 15-ton M80 was the Yugoslav answer to the Soviet BMP-1. The Ukrainian armed forces have hundreds of T-72s and BMP-1s in service, so they will be able to integrate the M84 and M80 without any problems, Forbes explained. The publication noted that thanks to the equipment that Croatia plans to transfer, Ukraine could provide two battalions or half a brigade. In particular, Ukrainian officials previously stated that they would reorganize the new 156th Infantry Brigade into a mechanized brigade. The 156th Mechanized Brigade is one of 14 new 2,000-strong brigades recently formed in the Ukrainian ground forces, at least 10 of which are subordinate to the ground forces. Most of these new army brigades, which were formed in the 1950s, started out as infantry brigades that lacked heavy weapons. The article recalled, It is known that a Ukrainian mechanized brigade usually has 31 tanks and 93 combat vehicles. However, 10 mechanized brigades already require 310 tanks and 930 combat vehicles. At the same time, back in September, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reported that his government could not provide heavy weapons even to four of the 14 new brigades. In turn, Ukraine also produces some new vehicles, namely upgrading old ones with additional armor and better fire control systems. However, most of the equipment still comes from allies. In particular, during the full-scale war, Kyiv's partners promised to provide about 900 tanks and 1,400 combat vehicles, as well as thousands of light armored personnel carriers and armored trucks. But the Ukrainians have lost almost as much armor as they got from their allies. 900 tanks and 1,400 combat vehicles. That means Ukraine could produce enough armor to keep its old ground combat brigades, about 100, at full strength. But it is struggling to produce equipment for any new brigades it forms. Forbes noted, However, Ukraine cannot refuse to form new brigades because many Ukrainian soldiers have been fighting constantly since the full-scale Russian invasion, so they are tired, and such exhaustion can have very bad consequences. North Korean soldiers are already in Russia and will begin military operations against Ukrainian troops in the coming days. This indicates that the North Korea is fully participating in the war with Ukraine, said the head of the presidential office of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, in an interview with the Italian publication Corriere della Sera. He noted that he could not yet say how many people were involved and whether North Korean units could really change the course of the war. More detailed information was needed. However, according to Yermak, the North Korean military is completely changing the political scenario and meaning of the war caused by Russian aggression. De facto, we can say that North Korea is participating in this conflict. De jour, there was no official declaration of war from Pyongyang, but de facto, they joined the military aggression against our country, a conflict that has been going on for a decade. Yermak noted, he also stressed that it is not enough to simply stop the fighting. It is necessary to prevent further aggression, otherwise the Baltic and Balkan countries will be at risk. If Ukraine doesn't stop the invasion, they will be next. Answering a question about the possibility of asking NATO to send troops, Yermak emphasized that the Ukrainians are fighting themselves, of course, with the help of our partners, but on their own, and are doing so quite effectively. 
At the same time, he noted Ukraine needs a sufficient amount of weapons and financial support because only a strong and militarily secure Ukraine will be ready for serious negotiations with Russia. Thousands of North Korean troops are preparing to back Russian ruler Vladimir Putin in his war against Ukraine. The new soldiers are reportedly from North Korea's Special Operations Forces, the country's most capable military unit, and are likely to be deployed to Russia's Kursk region to try to retake the territory. However, Western analysts can only speculate on how effective these forces are against the backdrop of Ukraine's capable army, writes Phillips Payson O'Brien, professor of strategic studies at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, in an article for The Atlantic. Putin saw an opportunity to strengthen his hand in the war and took it, regardless of the Western backlash. He appears to be betting that the United States will not intervene directly. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin acknowledged that North Korea had joined Russia in the conflict, calling it a very serious problem. Since the start of the full-scale invasion, the United States has been hesitant to provide Ukraine with advanced weapons such as HIMARS, Abrams tanks, ATA CMS missiles, F-16 fighters and JASM long-range missiles. While these weapons were eventually provided, it was a waste of time that limited Ukraine's options. Moreover, the United States has never given a clear answer to the question of whether it would allow Western weapons to be used to strike Crimea, the Kirsch Bridge and other Russian targets outside of Ukraine.